Hey folks, welcome to this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Researching the cloud blog so you don't have to. I'm Carl Kischel. This week, we have a couple of really cool announcements regarding Azure and a new partnership with Coursera for learning and scholarships. Azure Trivia is back and an opportunity to win some prizes, some redirection of compliancy solutions, moving to the Compliancy Center in Microsoft 365, some migration tools that are now available for SharePoint Online, and much more. So with that, let's jump into it. All the links for each update can be found in the description portion of the video. Our first update, teaming up with Coursera on new Azure specializations and scholarships. So if you're not familiar with Coursera, it's coursera.org on the internet. That is a platform for learning. A lot of uh, participating universities, colleges, schools, etc., provide uh, free classes or paid for classes that are available on Coursera. It's real-time learning. Um, also, many industries, uh, companies, etc., also provide some some learning classes. So, with that, Azure has also announced through Microsoft some additional fundamentals training around Azure regarding the uh, AZ-900 classes, data fundamentals, AI, and, and much, much more. So this is a, a revamp on some learning and some courseware for Microsoft Azure, and also some scholarship opportunity as well. So above and beyond the skilling and the new classes, there are some uh, scholarship opportunities when taking these classes for certification. So check out the link for more info. Azure Trivia is back, and of course it's bigger and better than ever. So this is an opportunity to win some prizes from the Microsoft Azure team. Uh, each week, starting this week, on Twitter with the uh, handle at Azure, there'll be a question that's posted and an opportunity for you to answer those questions. And uh, a couple tips here in the blog post on how to go about interacting with, uh, with Twitter and with Azure to get your most out of this experience and hopefully qualify for some of the prizes that are being offered. So check out the link for more info. Some announcements regarding redirection of compliancy solutions from SEC to Microsoft 365 Compliancy Center. So if you're familiar with uh, auditing, data loss prevention, information governance, records management, et cetera, those were typically found in uh, the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center, or SCC. They are all being moved to the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center. So no net new changes in functionality or features, but just a heads up, if you're looking for these features in the near future, that they will be moved to the new Compliancy Center for Microsoft 365. Some roadmap updates for you regarding SharePoint Online and migration capabilities. So with the Mover acquisition, that was over a year ago at this point, Mover.io, if you are familiar with that website, that is a set of tools that Microsoft acquired to help you move from one platform to another. And uh, this provides a, the capability now, it's currently in development and should be out very shortly within the next couple of weeks. Instead of going to the website for these migration tools, you can now go to the SharePoint Admin Center and move your Dropbox. This also pertains to G Suite as well, so and your Google migrations. So with uh, some recent announcements regarding some changes in Google licensing and uh, storage allocations and costs, you may want to consider moving to the Microsoft platform and these new tools that are now embedded in the SharePoint Admin Center allow you to do an assessment and perform the actual migration. So be on the lookout for these tools in the SharePoint Admin Center coming soon. Another roadmap update regarding Microsoft 365 and specifically Exchange Online and Outlook for Business on the web. So this is currently in development and should be released in August of 2021. This will be the ability to book travel time between 
building locations, between destinations, etc., within your uh, calendaring facility within Outlook on the web. So as you book uh, meetings that might be spaced out between different locations, you could also book travel time between those two automatically. So keep an eye out for this feature coming soon. Some best practices regarding incorporating AZ900 and AI900 into existing curriculum. So if you're interested in these two certifications, uh, Azure Fundamentals and AI Fundamentals as well, this uh, guest blog post by uh, an associate professor at the University of Lincoln is a, is a pretty good read. So this talks about kind of taking these certifications and uh, opportunities and weaving them into existing curriculum that might exist within your institution. Uh, some good best practices here and um, some good leverage points on uh, taking this information and enhancing existing curriculum with uh, an opportunity for certification. And keep in mind, currently there are a lot of free certification opportunities within the Azure Fundamentals cert exams that are available as we speak. So check out the link for more info. Planning a multi-cloud adoption with Azure Defender. So why would you use Azure Defender if you're doing a multi-cloud adoption? And multi-cloud, not only Azure, of course, it would be also AWS or GCP. So based on a recent study, cloud misconfigurations can take an average of uh, over 20 days, 20 to 25 days to fix. And um, you know, with time to cloud and reducing time to deployment is fairly critical. So this study also found that these mis misconfigurations are primarily within the realm of security. So by using Azure Defender, you could perform an assessment on either your Azure Cloud, your AWS Cloud, or GCP to make sure your posture is completely compliant to what you want to do and avoid misconfiguration, so reducing your time to deployment as much as possible. So if you're not familiar with the Azure Security Center or Azure Defender, uh, do note that this is a multi-cloud capable tool and uh, of great help in understanding your security posture and providing assessment and remediation telemetry to help you avoid these misconfigurations so you get to cloud as soon as possible. So check out the link for more info and details. Announcing Viva Learning public preview and uh, apologies as soon as I went uh, to record this session of course, the uh, update here is showing that the preview, the public preview at least, is now closed. So I um, wanted to include this in any event, as this blog po post does provide some great detail on what uh, Viva Learning is all about. If you missed the previous announcements regarding Viva Learning, um, they were, this was introduced at Microsoft Ignite. This is an add-on into the Microsoft Teams platform that provides you and your users with a curated learning system and learning pathway uh, based on users' uh, experiences, um, what they want to achieve from a knowledge set, education set, uh, et cetera. So um, unfortunately, the public preview is now closed, but keep your eye on this blog post and specifically one of the links that's called out here, which is aka.ms Viva Learning uh, for more info. So if this platform is something you want to keep an eye on, definitely take note of this uh, URL to keep track of all the latest developments. And last but not least, registration is now open for Microsoft Build, which will be uh, next month, May 25th through the 27th of this year. Uh, so registration is now open to uh, register uh, so you can uh, officially attend. Of course, all sessions will be recorded and available for later consumption. But the question I always get is, hey, Carl, uh, why would I register for Microsoft Build when I can experience it later on um, or take advantage of all the other Microsoft learning opportunities that, uh, that are offered? And uh, the answer to that question is really about interacting with the product group 
and the ability to do that in real time. And the only way you can do that in real time is if you were to register for the session and also take advantage of some of the one-on-one -on -one consultations that are available with, uh, within the Microsoft Build uh, three-day event. So if you are interested in interacting with the product group and taking advantage of some of those workshops and those consultations, definitely sign up now. Thank you so much for attending this session of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. If you enjoyed this briefing, please give me a thumbs up or a like. I do these every week approximately, so if you want to be notified uh, about future sessions, definitely uh, click on the notification bell, subscribe so you can keep up to date when I post these. Usually it's later in the week, and again, it's about once a week. Occasionally I'll also do a, um, a tip or trick or two on the, uh, the channel as well. If you have any feedback or would like to reach out to me, I could be found on LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, also feel free to drop a comment and I read all comments and, and publish accordingly. So with that, I wish you well, have a great week, and we will catch you next time. Take care.